This is the uh, 2019 Solid Mechanics exam, Eng 5443, uh, question 2, and it's a torsion question. Um, 2A is about a hollow steel shaft, and there's some details on there. So let's take a look. Um, 2A. Uh, we've got a hollow steel shaft. I'll start just by drawing the shaft. And um, it's got some outer diameter and some inner diameter. And it's three meters in length. And um, we're told it transmits 30 kilowatts, that's 30,000 watts, and it turns at 140 RPM. The maximum shear stress, uh, sorry, maximum shear stress tau max equals 70 megapascals, and uh, the maximum angle of twist, uh, phi max equals five degrees. Um, I'm just going to turn that into radians straight away because I can remember that it's better where we can to work in radians in these problems. So five degrees, um, 360 degrees is two pi radians, 180 degrees is pi radians. So five degrees is five divided by 180 multiplied by pi I get that to be 0 0.087 uh, radians. So to go from degrees to radians, we divide by 180 and then multiply by pi. I think that's right. Okay, um, so that's all the information that we're going to... Oh, and there's one more thing in the question which says that g equals 80 gigapascals. That's 80 times 10 to the 9 pascals. So I'll record that like that. Um, okay, now we need to start thinking about uh, hollow shafts, and it's worth going straight to the data sheet. Uh, we are doing torsion of shafts. So I'm just going to write out all the equations that might be useful under torsion of shafts. That's this third section down. Um, what we've got uh, T over J equals tau over R equals G phi over L. I think that's actually a theta on the data sheet. It doesn't matter what you call it. I'm going to be consistent and use that symbol, whatever it is. Um, we've got a hollow shaft and for that we need the second definition of J. Um, you just have to remember that the first definition is a solid shaft because there's only one diameter specified and this is for a hollow shaft and um, then we've got one more equation we're going to want which is p equals 2 pi nt over 60 and i'm going to use this one first because we know power is 30,000 watts and that equals 2 times pi times N is rotation speed in RPM, 140, times T divided by 60. And that's going to give us a torque T. That is going to be 60 times 30,000 divided by 2 times pi times 140. Um, That comes out to be 2046 uh, Newton meters. Okay, uh, well that's a good place to start. Then at this stage I just go back and check what we were actually asked for in the question. Uh, calculate the required outer and inner diameters. Um, If uh, the allowable shear stress is 70 megapascals um, and the tw angle of twist is maximum is uh, 
five degrees. Okay, so we just need to pay attention here. Let's do the first condition and look at the allowable shear stress. That's tau. So what we're saying is 2046 divided by j equals uh, tau max, that's 70 times 10 to the 6, divided by r max, which is d on 2. And we don't yet know j and we don't yet know d. Um, but let's say um, we can rearrange this in terms of d. And that will give me, uh, that 2 will multiply up to give 140 on the top. And so I'll get d equals um, 140 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by j divided by 2046. Um, alternatively, that would be r equals um, tau j divided by t, and then we double that to get uh, d. So that sounds OK. The reason I'm using the outside diameter here is because the stress increases the further out we go. So the maximum stress is going to happen on the outside of this object. So that's kind of condition one. And I'm just going to park that for the time being while we look at condition two. Uh, condition two says that phi max equals 0 0.087. So here what I'm going to say is t over j. And one of the sort of useful things to keep in mind with the torsion equation is we can pick and choose which pair of things we want to be equal. So here I'm going to ignore the middle and I'm going to say t over j equals g phi over l. Um, and we know everything in this equation except j. So we can say, OK, j equals, um, uh, it's going to be tl over g phi, which equals uh, 2046 times 3 over 80 times 10 to the 9 multiplied by 0 0.087. And that equals... Eight point eight two times ten to the minus seven meters to the four. Um, that's good. Now we've got a value of what j must be. We're going to be able to calculate d because we know everything else in d. So we can go back to condition one. Just move this up a bit. Um, and say d equals 140 times 10 to the 6 multiplied by 8.82 times 10 to the minus 7 all divided by 2046 and that comes out as 0 0.060 meters um, and that's good that's the outer diameter now calculated um, as always at this stage it's just worth checking is that a sensible number um, that's six centimeters you know that I, I don't have a sense of whether it's correct or not, but if it was six kilometers or six microns, I'd be worried. Um, some fraction of a meter as a shaft diameter seems OK. So uh, I'm going to keep on going on the assumption that's correct. It seems not too far off a reasonable number to me. Uh, good. Now we've just got to finish this off by going right back and looking 
the question one the outside diameter and the inside diameter this is the outside diameter and finally with the inside diameter we only had that in our definition of j there so what we can do is to say um, j equals pi d to the 4 minus d to the 4 all over 32 um, 32 I'll multiply up the 32 times j which we know equals pi times capital D to the 4 minus pi d to the 4 um, I can divide, I'll cancel that pi and divide this side by pi um, and then finally I can get d to the 4 equals 0 0.060 to the 4 minus 32 times 8.82 .8 times 10 to the minus 7 all divided by pi and I guess I have to hope that that comes out as a positive number otherwise I've got problems um, but we'll worry about that when we come to it so 32 times 8.82 .8 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by pi 0 0.060 to the 4 minus that answer is 3.976 times 10 to the minus 6 that seems like a reasonable answer D equals the fourth root of that that's where you need to just know your way around your calculator that comes out to be 0 0.045 meters which is about 45 millimeters um, so we can finish that off and say outside diameter equals uh, 60 millimeters inside diameter equals 45 millimeters and that's that part of the question complete um, good let's just go on and immediately start on part B which is about this bar in two segments um, so the obvious thing to do is to sketch the bar first um, it looks like this and there's some torque there T and it's matched at the other end okay and this is um, 1.45 meters and this is 1.2 meters and um, this has a diameter of 0.056 meters and this has a diameter of 0.048 meters I've converted from millimeters to meters there um, is there any other information in the question we need yes um, the maximum shear stress tau max equals 30 megapascals 30 times 10 to the 6 pascals uh, g equals 80 gigapascals that's 80 times 10 to the 9 and phi max equals 1.25 degrees and again we'll just convert that into radians 1.25 times 180 sorry 1.25 divided by 180 multiplied by pi 
comes out as 0 0.0218 radians. I mean, one thing you can remember for that conversion is a radian is about 60 degrees, and so your number of radians should be about a 60th of your number of degrees. But anyway, uh, different ways to remember that. Make sure you remember one. Okay, um, just for, for rigor, I'm just going to do one thing, which is method of sections. And I'm just going to show very quickly, uh, if we take a section there, um, this we know is T. So this is T in region 1. And therefore, the torque, the internal torque in region 1 must just be T. And I can do the same thing on the other side, method of sections on this end. This is now the uh, torque in region 2, and we know that there's a torque here of T, and so the torque in region 2 also equals T. So we can just be clear, internal torque in this uh, solid circular bar is T throughout. OK, um, the next thing I guess I'm going to want to do is to start using the torsion formula. So let's just write that out straight away. Um, we've got the whole lot in here. So it's T over J equals uh, tau over R equals uh, G phi over L. And now we just need to think about what the question asks. So there's one bit about the allowable shear stress in the shaft. Um, the shear stress in AB uh, is the first. We'll, we'll, we'll look at shear stress and then we'll look at um, um, twist angle. The shear stress in AB tau AB equals uh, TAB, which is T1 that we just talked about, it's T, uh, RAB over JAB. And I guess one thing I could have done just as background is to calculate values of J. Um, JAB equals pi D to the 4 on 32. That's data sheet. Um, so that equals pi. 0.056 the 4 on 32 and that equals nine point six six times ten to the minus seven meters to the four. Uh, similarly, J for the section BC is pi D to the 4 on 32, and that's going to be pi times 0 0.048 to the 4, all divided by 32. Five point two times 10 to the minus 7, or I guess let's use the same amount of information in both. 5.21 times 10 to the minus 7 meters to the 4. Um, so we can go on and solve what we had here. Tau AB, the maximum uh, stress, is 30 times 10 to the 6 pascals, or the, the stress we're targeting is 30 times 10 to the 6, equals T, which we are trying to calculate, multiplied by R, which is D on 2, which here is 0 0.028, divided by um, 9.66 times 10 to the minus 7, which means T equals 30 times 10 to the 6, multiplied by 9.66 times 10 to the minus 7, all divided by 0 0.028, equals... Oh, 
1035 newton meters okay um, so if the torque exceeds 1035 we fail condition 1 which is the shear stress in AB same thing for the shear stress in BC and we can just jump straight to this last step because we know the calculation it's going to be the same 30 times 10 to the 6 times uh, 5.21 times 10 to the minus 7 all divided by um, 0.024 that comes out to be 651 newton meters to the nearest newton meter so that's a more restrictive condition if we go above 651 we'll have too much shear stress in BC um, which kind of makes sense the if, if you've got the same torsion everywhere it's going to um, cause the highest shear stress in the narrowest bit because that has the lowest value of J um, okay there's still one thing to go which is the total twist angle we need to say phi total equals phi a b plus phi b c um, one thing to note when I did uh, this picture here t2 and t1 point in different directions so I'm going to need to make one of them negative for this to work um, generally phi from the equation at the top of the page the torsion equation equals TL over GJ uh, TAB LAB divided by GJAB plus TBC LBC divided by GJBC equals, I'm going to move all the way back here, TAB is just positive T, we'll make that the positive one, LAB we know is uh, 1.45 meters, divided by G is 80 times 10 to the 9, uh, multiplied by 9.66 times 10 to the minus 7, and by the way phi total is the phi we calculated before that's 0 0.0218 radians uh, plus TBC here is now minus T it points in the opposite direction to that T so we need to make it minus multiplied by uh, 1.2 divided by 80 times 10 to the 9 um, and J for that bit J for BC is 5.21 times 10 to the minus 7. So that number there is 1.876 times 10 to the minus 5. And the other bit, I've put my T out the front, sorry, move all this up, put my T out the front of the brackets. So I'm taking this T and this T out of things and just multiplying all the numbers. Uh, 1.2 divided by 80 times 10 to the 9 divided by 5.21 times 10 to the minus 7. That's 2.879 times 10 to the minus 5. Um, that makes sense this term should be a slightly larger number because we've got a slightly smaller number on the bottom line um, T will come out negative here it doesn't it just means I picked the wrong choice of which one to make negative here it's the magnitude of T that we're really interested in um, rewriting all of that I get T equals 0 0.0218 divided by uh, 1.876 times 10 to the minus 5 minus 2.879 times 10 to the minus 5 and that equals Two 
two um it's coming out as a negative number but that number is 2173 newton meters the magnitude of that torque um so that means the twist angle will only be a problem if we go above 2173 newton meters so the most restrictive condition is the one as we as we start at zero and start increasing the torque um, the first thing we're going to get a problem with is this one the 651 newton meters that's going to cause too high a shear stress is on shear stress in BC so that means the maximum value of T is 651 newton meters and at this stage I think that's my final answer I just go back and have one quick look at the question again um, determine the allowable torque T if you've got a maximum shear stress of 30 megapascals and a maximum angle of twist of 1.25 degrees well I think that is my final answer to that so I would leave that and move on to the next question and that's how you do various calculations about uh, shafts in torsion.